EVs are failing. A new EV report just revealed EV owners hate their EVs. According to Consumer Reports, EV owners are having 80% more issues compared to gas car owners. EVs are dying on the roads, catching fire, and even killing people. This EV report literally shocked the entire industry as it revealed three deadly EV flaws that the government leaders have hid from the common public. Are EVs a scam? What exactly is this report all about? Is it safe to buy an EV right now? In this video, I'm going over three fatal flaws and dissecting a brutal EV report that could literally end the EV industry forever, so watch very carefully. Recently, a bombshell report from Consumer Reports dropped and guess what? EVs are facing a bumpy road with nearly 80% more issues than traditional gas-powered rides. Yes, once again, you heard me right. But wait, it gets crazier. Plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, or PHEVs, are in an even tighter spot, facing almost 150% more problems. More computer screens and less mechanical parts is turning out to be a bad decision. Is it a feature or a flaw? On the flip side, regular gas cars are getting better than ever before, with just about 14% of the owners reporting minor problems. And get this, EV owners are now exchanging their EVs for gas cars. In 2021, 81% of the people said that they'd buy an EV again, and half of these were Tesla owners. But guess how much this number dropped by 2023? 50%. That's right, nearly half the people who thought they would buy an EV again are now facing nightmares and loads of issues. Even with luxury EV brands like BMW and Mercedes, brand loyalty has now dropped from 85% to 60%. Way to retain those customers. In a minute, I'm going to tell you about three big issues that you should be warned about if you want to ensure your safety and your family's safety. But before we do that, let me tell you about the real condition of EV companies. Let's kick things off with Tesla, the big kahuna of electric cars. They've had to recall over 1.6 million vehicles in China alone, and not for something trivial. We're talking steering software glitches and issues with the door locking systems. Imagine cruising down the road and your car decides it's got a mind of its own. Not cool, right? And it's not just a one-off. They've had to recall 2 million cars in the US a while back for autopilot software hiccups. A Tesla even killed eight people last month due to co-pilot failures, and this issue now seems to be getting out of hand. But Tesla isn't riding this roller coaster alone. Ford's Mustang Mach-E got caught in the crossfire too, with a recall to fix a battery issue that wasn't sorted out with just a software update. Instead, they had to replace a part called the Bust Electrical Center. And it's not just a handful of cars, we're talking about 50,000 cars that needed this fix. The Chevrolet Bolt wasn't left out of the recall party either. They had to pull back 140,000 bolts due to a fire risk from the underbody after a crash. Imagine surviving a crash only to deal with a fire. That's adding insult to injury. Volkswagen had its share of drama with the ID4 EVs. Over 23,000 of these sleek rides were recalled in the US because the material in the roller sunshades wasn't up to snuff when it comes to flammability standards. Not something you'd expect from a brand that's been around for centuries. And it's not just these big names. The recall wave has hit a bunch of others, affecting over 1.3 million vehicles for reasons ranging from faulty child seat latches in Chevy and GMC SUVs to rear view camera issues in Mitsubishi Outlanders and Ford Explorer and Lincoln Aviator SUVs. And get this, GM even had to recall a Blazer EV because the stores might just decide to open while driving. How's that for recklessness? Now, out of all three brands, three particular EV cars especially ran into lots of problems. First up, we've got the Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid, this family minivan, which should be all about smooth rides and keeping the kids quiet with its tech, scored a dismal 14 out of 100. Can you believe that? Owners are reporting everything from annoying rattles to full-blown transmission meltdowns. Imagine gearing up for a family trip and your high-tech van decides to play dead. Not exactly the future we were promised, huh? Then there's the Audi Q5, which usually screams luxury and smooth driving. But hold up, it's been hit with a barrage of reliability issues too. We're talking engine troubles, electrical system glitches, and those fancy comfort features just giving up on life. It's like paying top dollar for a five-star hotel and finding out the plumbing doesn't work. 
And oh, Tesla, the darling of the EV world, isn't immune either. The Model 3, which was supposed to be the gateway car for everyone to jump on the EV bandwagon, has hit its own share of drama. Sure, the powertrain's solid, but those other parts? Not so much. From paint problems to trim pieces throwing in the towel, it's a reminder that even the big players have some homework to do. So what's the deal? It seems like EVs and their hybrid cousins are going through some serious growing pains. With all this tech crammed into them, there's just more stuff that can go haywire. And with the push for greener rides getting stronger, car makers are racing to pump out these futuristic vehicles, maybe before they've ironed out all the kinks. Consumer Reports is laying it out straight. We are not ready for EVs. Now let me lay out the three major flaws that were hidden from you just to sell the pipe dream of EVs. First up, we have EV fires. The first and probably the scariest problem out there occurs when your EV catches fire. Many firefighters don't even know how to take care of EV fires because of different mechanics compared to conventional cars and the probability of EV batteries to catch fire weeks after it caught fire. But why does this even happen? First off, lithium ion batteries are like the heart of an EV, giving it all the juice it needs to keep rolling without a drop of gasoline. But here's the catch. They're super sensitive to things like damage, manufacturing defects, and overheating. When things go south, they can go into what's called thermal runaway. So your EV can catch fire anytime, even while you're in it, if things go wrong. There have been countless cases where people either died or had their house go up in flames due to EVs catching fire. Now you might be thinking, but don't all cars have a risk of catching fire? And yeah, you're right, gasoline cars aren't strangers to fire hazards either, but EV fires are a whole different beast. The fires could be tougher to put out and need 11 times more water. Next up, there's a huge problem with our charging infrastructure. We're talking about not enough charging stations to go around, especially in more rural and less developed areas. Imagine planning a road trip and having to map out your route solely based on where you can juice up your ride. Not exactly the freedom of the open road as promised, huh? Then there's the whole saga with charging times. While filling up a gas tank takes, what, five minutes tops? Charging an EV can be a true test of your patience. If you're using a standard home charger, you might be looking at hours before you're good to go again. And even at public charging stations, if you're not using a super fast charger, you might as well grab a coffee and hey, maybe a meal, and perhaps even consider taking a short nap afterwards. And the worst part is that EVs lose their charging nearly 40% faster in winters, so you'll find more people in lines at charging stations. Low temperatures can mess with the battery's chemistry, leading to slower charging times and even reduced range. Picture this, you're all cozy in your EV, trying to charge up on a frosty day, and your car's like, nope, I'm gonna take my sweet time. Not exactly convenient, is it? 30% of the chargers aren't working properly, and despite government's promises of a better network, we still have a long way to go. And lastly, we have the increasing price of EVs, but the US isn't alone to blame for this. Let me explain. Did companies want to make EVs so badly that they'd compromise on quality? A big no. You see, the Biden administration has been bringing out strict emission laws against gas cars. They want car makers to meet a certain number when it comes to emissions. But think about this. How can a company that only makes gas cars meet this goal? The government is basically saying, make EVs or pay heavy fines. So the only option for car brands is to sell EVs. Even the Japanese brands which were purely against EVs, like Toyota and Honda, are now having to launch some EV models to make the cut. Instead of following the herd, their original plan was to let customers pick what's best for them. Sounds ideal. Now, I know what you might be thinking. How could the politicians force brands into selling EVs when they knew that the present infrastructure and technology is so bad? Well, this was a big money-making scheme from them, one which even involved shaking hands with good old China. Biden was hell-bent on making EVs. He gave what he could to companies like Ford, that is, money, but what he couldn't offer was batteries and raw materials, so naturally, he turned to a country where everything is the cheapest, China. But China just stabbed Joe Biden in the back. They issued an export ban on the materials needed to build EVs as we were getting 80% of our supplies from them. 
The Chinese want America to let them sell their cheaper cars, the BYDs and so on, so that they could undercut our brands and take control over our market. This material congestion has led to supply chain shortages, and now you will not be able to purchase an EV for anything below $60,000. All in all, companies made a huge mistake going all in on EVs while we weren't even ready. Car brands, especially the big names in the EV market, are on high alert. They're rolling out recalls, software updates, and even redesigning batteries to cut down the risk of these fires. So many innocent lives have already been lost, along with thousands of workers losing their jobs along the way. This just begs the question, are we rushing into electrification too fast? Should gas cars be given another chance? Let me know down in the comments below. I just uploaded a video about groundbreaking news that could hurt the entire EV industry. Do check it out if you want to be truly shocked by what's about to happen with EVs.